This is Jeremy Pickens with Auburn University's Department of Horticulture and the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. And I am the nursery and greenhouse specialist. In this video, we're going to discuss an overview of commercial hydroponic lettuce production. We're talking about leafy green production. We're talking about mainly leaf lettuce or bib lettuce. We're not really talking about the heart uh, type, excuse me, the heading type lettuce such as iceberg or the large romains. That's because they have a much longer crop cycle, typically around 50 to 60 days. Whereas um, these leaf or bib type lettuce from transplant only take 30 to 35 days. And that's important because we want to push as many crops as possible through that greenhouse because we're selling them based on the head, not the weight. And so the faster we can move a crop through, the more crops we can have per year and the faster we can recover some of our expensive expenses uh, for this production system. There are two major cropping systems with greenhouse uh, lettuce culture. At least on a commercial level, there's raft culture, also called float beds or deep water culture, DWC, and also the nutrient film technique. The nutrient film technique or NFT is a series of plastic troughs that are positioned throughout the greenhouse. The plants are transplanted directly into these troughs where a thin film of nutrient solution is constantly recirculated through the system. It's not a large volume of water that is running through these NFT troughs, just a thin film that's probably just a fraction of an inch. Uh, this nutrient solution or fertilizer is constantly running through here. Uh, once it reaches the end of the trough, it is going to be drained to a uh, centralized collection sump where it is then recirculated back to the troughs. Most commercial NFT systems are going to utilize some sort of automated control system to make adjustments to both pH and EC. EC stands for electrical conductivity. Fertilizer salts, the more that you add to water, the more conductive it is. So uh, you can set these controllers to specific ranges. So if the fertilizer levels drop too low, it's going to give you a lower EC reading outside of your range. And so that controller is going to send a signal to a dosing pump, which is in turn going to dose or inject uh, fertilizer directly into the irrigation line. Same thing for pH. If the pH falls out of range, that controller is going to send a signal to a pump that's either going to inject acid or base to put that pH back in the appropriate range. The other major commercial lettuce production system would be deep water culture or raft culture. This system is a little bit uh, less expensive than an NFT system and a lot of people like to start off with this one. In these systems, rafts are used to float plants on top of a nutrient solution. So the plants are planted directly into the rafts and the roots, as they come in contact with that nutrient solution, they grow down into it. Most successful DWC systems are going to utilize aeration to deliver oxygen into the water column. That's important because roots need oxygen just as much as they need water or fertilizer. So to get that oxygen into the water column, we use regenerative blowers. Those blowers push air into pipes and from those pipes they get diffused through air stones. These air stones are trying to make very small bubbles. The smaller the bubble, the more surface area. The more surface area, the more opportunity for water, excuse me, for oxygen to dissolve in that water column. You really need to design your aeration system properly. What you don't want is a lot of bubbles bubbling up through the raft, creating a lot of splashing. The splashing keeps the top of that raft uh, saturated with a highly uh, uh, nutrient laden uh, film, which grows algae readily. And uh, in doing that, you may create a situation where, uh, well, one thing, the lettuce may become unmarketable and also could create some food safety uh, uh, hazards there. Now we're going to talk about some of the uh, culture techniques with these systems. A really important aspect of greenhouse lettuce production is being able to grow your own transplants. We don't sow seeds directly into the production system because it's using valuable time that we don't really want to waste. Um, by uh, using transplants and transplanting seedlings into the system, we shave off about two weeks of production. Again, we're looking for a 30 to 35 day window of production here. The most popular types of uh, growing media for these seedlings would be oasis cubes or rock wool cubes here. You can see they come in perforated sheets um, with holes drilled in them. You can just pop off the cube once the uh, seedling gets the appropriate size. Another option is net pots. Net pots probably a little more common for smaller systems, not the large systems because they're a little more labor intensive. However, the benefit of net pot is uh, you can plant a much larger transplant. Uh, but again, the, the disadvantage would be it's a little bit more labor dealing with those net pots, potting the seedling up into that larger pot, and then if you want to reuse the pot, cleaning it later. 
So when you're choosing seeds, make sure you use a reputable source and use greenhouse varieties. This is typically indicated in the seed catalogs, or you can talk to the seed salesman about that. Um, we also recommend pelletized seeds. So you can see there's lettuce seeds in the bottom left-hand corner here next to the penny. Uh, you can see they're very small and they're difficult to handle with your hands. And so by pelletizing these seeds in a clay prill, it uh, makes it pretty easy to handle with uh, commercial seeders or if you're doing it by hand uh, with your fingertips. We definitely don't want too big of a transplant. Two weeks is pretty uh, good size transplant depending on temperatures. And that's gonna be two to four true leaves. You see at the upper top left-hand corner, there are several sizes of transplants. You'd be surprised the second from the right actually will grow faster than the other three to the left that are bigger. That's because you'll notice all the roots around these uh, larger transplants. Those roots grow into other cubes surrounding that transplant if it, or that seedling if it uh, grows too big. And when you break that uh, cube off to go plant it, you're breaking off a lot of those uh, roots and it subsequently you'll get a lot of uh, stress for that plant uh, and it uh, takes a little time for it to recover. So here's a few tips if you're building your own DWC system. You can use uh, water depths of anywhere from six to 16 inches deep. Um, I like it at the minimum at least 10 inches deep. That just helps with uh, the bubble size with your aeration. Uh, you can use two inch uh, lumber. Uh, I like to use two by 12s, but you can use uh, smaller lumber if you need to, or you can use concrete blocks. Um, I definitely recommend at the minimum a 20 mil uh, HDPE liner. I like liners with a white on black with the white side pointed up. That way I can see if there's any tears in the system uh, after having it in place. They're, they sell a um, repair tape that you can use uh, if you find any tears. Those liners are relatively inexpensive, about $600 a liner. Uh, you can have the corners pre-molded by the manufacturer or you can Fold them yourself. I prefer to fold them myself just in case the manufacturer and my numbers are off a little bit. You definitely want to make these in four foot increments. That's because the rafts you're going to use are, in, are four by eight. Uh, you can just cut those in half to, um, for ease of handling. Uh, by making them in four foot increments, you're not going to have a lot of waste in cutting uh, that foam. Uh, you also want to install an oversized drain. I can't uh, stress to you enough how important it is to have a lot of or the ability to drain that system fast. If you have something go wrong and you need to swap out your water quick, uh, you definitely want to be able to drain that and fill it fast. You can use tank adapters or bulkhead fittings to plumb uh, PVC pipe through your, uh, through your liner. Also, uh, you really only need to support that tank from the outside. Any kind of supports on the inside could be potential for uh, tears or rips in the future. Uh, one other thing, uh, before you tack the sides of your liner down, you want to fill that uh, tank up and let it sit for 24 to 48 hours just so that ground settles a little bit. It's a lot of weight. If you were to tack it down and it settle later, uh, it might tear your liner. Obviously, an important component to the deep water culture systems that are utilizing rafts is the actual raft itself and building that. Uh, rafts can uh, take a little time. A lot of people are using this blue construction type foam board. Um, I can't recommend that because it's not food grade. However, a lot of people are using it. Uh, if you're going to be cutting holes for the one inch cube media, a seven eighths inch uh, speed or bore or auger uh, type drill bit works very well. Butterfly bits or spade bits uh, do not work that well. Neither do hole saws. So using this type of bit with uh, high RPMs and applying it low pressure very slowly uh, works really well cutting these one inch holes. The, um, if you do end up using the blue board, uh, you definitely want to get this plastic sheet off of it uh, before you uh, drill the holes or put it in the system. Uh, what I would recommend is getting a food grade polystyrene sheet like you see on the far right. Um, the thicker the board, the longer it's going to last because again, this um, at a minimum, you definitely want to use at least one inch thick uh, uh, foam boards uh, because you get a lot of weight on there. And if you're going to be picking these boards up with all those lettuce heads, uh, that it can crack. So the thicker the board, the longer it's going to last. I like to cut my rafts in half to make four by four uh, units. Uh, that just makes it a little easier to handle. There's a lot of options for plant spacing. However, most everyone is using eight inch on center spacing. That'll give you about 36 uh, heads per raft. That's good for most leaf type lettuce. If you're going to be growing basil, you might switch down to a six inch to get a little bit more higher plant density. And I wouldn't recommend going any larger than eight inch. Uh, Cause you just, again, you don't have a lot of um, 
those crops are going to take longer to grow and you get a lot less heads per area. What's great about the DWC system is that you can make it any size you want. You can make it a hobby size system or you can make it a commercial large system. You can make them uh, to fit just about anywhere. You can see this one on the far left. It's kind of made a little bit more ornate and is uh, probably about a four by 20 foot uh, system. Whereas on the, uh, the, the system in the middle will hold about 4,000 heads of lettuce in a 30 by 96 greenhouse. And it's got two uh, 88 by 12 foot beds. And you can get really small. You can grow them in, again, just about anything that will hold that nutrient solution. Um, just a little small uh, two square foot River May tote can work just fine as a hobby system. If you're interested in learning more about greenhouse lettuce production, please check out our latest fact sheet, uh, ANR 2903. You can access it via the ACES website. That's aces.edu. Once you get there, just type in ANR-2903 in the search bar and it should come up pretty easily. If you have any further questions, you can also contact your regional extension agent for commercial horticulture. You can access them through your local county office and through them we'll try to answer any questions you might have. A special thank you to the Alabama Department of Agriculture and Industries for a 2019 specialty crop block grant that funded this program.